Hello again. This is the fourth and final excerpt that um, I wanted to pull out of the December meeting, December 2020 meeting of the Mount Baker Amateur Radio Club's digital group. Um, you can see the entire meeting if you want. It's listed here on my YouTube channel as the raw video. It's about two hours. It includes the full meeting and also includes about 20 minutes of just uh, general chatting that we typically do um, as people come on uh, line um, before the meeting actually starts. So uh, that's available here if you want it. This is an interesting uh, segment, though, in that a couple of our hams who uh, live very close to each other uh, we're experiencing uh, quite an anomaly using uh, the Rig Expert Antenna Analyzer. Um, at one guy's QTH, uh, the analyzer behaved very erratically. All he had to do was move his hand near it and numbers would start dancing around on the display. But at, uh, at another location, it worked perfectly fine. And so... Uh, to try to figure out what was going on, um, we got them a second uh, rig expert only to discover that it did exactly the same thing. So in this discussion, we talk about that. Uh, they uh, experiment with some stuff right on the screen, uh, running the rig analyzer, and the discussion moves into uh, the quite uh, that moves into the fact that the probable cause is a nearby AM uh, broadcast station. And so uh, a lot of people chime in, um, a lot of contributions from various members of the group, and a great discussion about how you might uh, go about filtering out an AM broadcast station that's near your place, that's interfering with your amateur radio. So it's a, it's a fun segment, um, some interesting things uh, to see here so i hope you'll enjoy it all right anybody else have anything they want to share we need to talk about that other thing that we came across you and i yeah go ahead Get Get started, i gotta <laughs> you want to you want to do that because uh, you yeah I, we had a question for the group <laughs> we've got a rig expert uh we went to galen's today and we did this a couple weeks ago also I can hook this up. We can disconnect the antenna at the radio. We've checked. There's no short in the antenna. But if we hook this up to the antenna itself and I get anywhere close to touching these, these are push button buttons. You've got to actually push them and click it. I just have to touch the button and the screen up here goes wonky. It starts giving me ones if I'm touching over the one. It'll go one, 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 one no matter what I touch. And we're and so we thought we mine was screwed. Galen borrowed buds. This is the next newest one. Does the exact same thing. Doesn't matter if we're looking at uh, we've we've gone all the way out to the antenna. I unhooked the cable, the coax, and hooked it into the antenna there. Does the same thing. It's almost like I'm standing on a ground and I'm grounding through this. But we could be in a shack, concrete floor. We don't know what it is. If you have nothing, if you have nothing attached to the uh, to that that antenna analyzer, does it behave? No problem. Like I can also stick it here at my house. Works great. Just hook it up to the antenna or whatever. Works fine. I've got never had a problem. Uh, the antenna. Are you in the field of that broadcast station out there? Yeah, we, that's that's, yes, yeah, that's right. what they're wondering. I have an yeah, antenna. That would be my guess. It's probably a grounding problem. And do you have two ground? There, because it could be a ground loop thing happening. Mm -hmm. I have a GR, a G. He's got a G five five RV. Five RV. And I'm yeah. hooking this from the antenna uh, at the uh, uh, at the rig, so it's going into the machine, into the tester, through the coax to the uh, ladder line of the G five RV. There's there's no closed circuit. It's an open circuit, so it's not shorting anywhere. And we've done it from the coax, and we've done it just at the antenna. So yeah. I'm not grounding anything. Did you say it did it even if there was no antenna hooked up? No. Okay. No. It did not. But as soon as we hook up that antenna, those analyzers 
go bunk your, you know. And and the thing is, the interesting thing is, I had I just put in this new G5 RV. Um, I had to replace the one that I had up, which had broken, and um, at the uh, where the antenna wire is up at the top of the ladder line, and that one was not. I I could hook up the uh, antenna to that or the analyzers, and got none of that behavior. It is only after I put in a complete uh, intact G5 RV and then tried to use the antenna analyzer that we experienced this problem. Before then, you know, because I had a broken antenna, no problem. So, so, it, so it's not just with any hunk of wire uh, that uh, it requires that antenna to make that phenomenon happen. It, it, well, it may be any hunk of wire, but, you know, all I've got is this hunk of wire to test. I've got three different antennas here at my house. It works perfectly for mine. Whether I do it at the end or in the shack, just hooking up the coax. It's now, does that does that antenna analyzer work with a VHF UHF uh, in that in those bands? No, well, they, they only go to thirty. This goes to thirty megahertz, and oh. it goes to forty-five. Okay. And uh, the, the the last thing is yes, I am I am probably less than a less than a quarter of a mile from the Punjabi. AM station, and you know, I, you know, I listen to stuff in my house. Anytime I have a speaker that is connected to a length of wire, um, I have a low-level audio presentation of the Punjab language, uh, uh, which you would think I had learned subliminally uh, by now. So, so, with the right coil and an LED on it, you can light the LED, right? Probably. <laughs> I mean, it is a fifty thousand watt station, if, if I remember correctly. Uh, whoa! See, I was just saying, look for two different ground points. If you got two ground points, it causes a ground loop, and I get weird stuff doing that. So, I something to look for. During the day. <laughs> well, anyway, so we just thought we'd bring it up to the group and see. Any yeah. ideas? Well, if it's any consolation, mine only goes to 28. <laughs> I just finished this kit. <laughs> Did it work yet? Well, you know, it's funny. It worked the first time I used it. The second time I used it, I thought it was not working. And I realized that between the first time I used it and the second time I used it, I think I damaged my antenna. <laughs> so. I have to do some more research tomorrow. Yeah, it, it seems to be working perfectly. The first time I used it, it shed my antenna was 12.9 megahertz. I went out and cut an inch off it. And after that, it's open. So it, there's more work needed. Does that station have to lower its power at night? Yes, 10,000 watts at oh, night. Wait. Can you try the antenna, uh, that analyzer at night with it? Do you still have you still have it, Galen, uh, Buds? Yes, I still have Buds Analyzer here. Oh, you want to try? Okay. There it is. And just a second. Yeah, while he's doing that, I'll just make a comment. The way this thing works, if you put a 50-ohm resistor across this BNC connector, the red LED goes out, indicating that the bridge is in balance. So the idea is you tune this until the frequency resonates and then the LED goes out like that. Oh, very simple design. That's that's yeah. almost foolproof. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you step on your coax when you're not yeah. paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing to try, Galen, is a dummy load if you have one. Plug that into the antenna and see if you still get the same behavior. Um. Okay, a dummy load. Uh, I'll try. Yeah, try try the antenna now and see if that see if it's gone away. Okay. See, Steve, this anyway. is this is my dummy load. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I've I've turned it on, and um, in during the day, I touch. 
Uh, touch the. I was trying to set the frequency, so let's see. Press the F2. Okay. Bud, talk to me. How does this work again? Uh, what do you want? What? Well, well you setting the frequency. Moving. If, if I, I'm, I've, I see the menu. If I press that, the two. Okay, now I'm in there. So I'm going to set the frequency to. Uh, well, okay, so I just hit a one and a four, and I am f at, I'm now three, uh, the fourth digit in, and I've got a one, six, four. So let me try this, see if I can back it up. Okay, cancel the discard. So it's still misbehaving, you're saying? Well, uh, one more try. Just, okay, I press... One. Bud, I think you're muted. One, four. Now, it's working better than it was. Galen, sure. can you but, set the frequency before you hook up the antenna? Yes, he can. Yeah, I, I, I believe so. Um, the thing, okay. I think you should trust the results, but yeah. Okay. Here's one thing I can tell you. If I move my finger around on the keyboard, it moved across, not pushing anything, just running it around. It did go to places where it wasn't should have. If you move your hand around on the back of the thing, does it also do stuff to the display? Uh, just a second. Let me get to uh, something. Okay. So I'm just, yep. See, I'm, I'm not pressing down, but the numbers are changing. What if you rub on the back? Okay, I'll try that and just... It's nothing to do with the buttons at all. Okay. Capacitance of your hand. Nope. Wow. Staying, it's not moving when I rub it on the back. It is only when I rub it on... When I rub it on the front, it definitely changes. You got the haunted version. Yeah, well, that's, that's true because mine did the same thing for him. Okay. Only yeah. the actual push button buttons, but you just right. touch the thing and it changes and it... Like it makes connection. So I'm going to disconnect the antenna. But only at Galen's house, right, Dave? Yeah. Now, yeah. if I disconnect the antenna, go back to the frequency mode. Um, let's, let's cancel. And I go in and what, what frequency would you like, bud? Oh, uh, uh, 14... Um, uh, Fourteen one five zero. Fourteen one five zero. No problem. Now hook the antenna. Up. Will okay. will it read it? Well, the problem is, is that the minute I touch anything, yeah, on, yeah, you're not going to tell it, goes, it, it goes to anything. something else. It's not even. Um, I've got the antenna set. So now hit now hit four. Press W R. Okay, so the four. I pressed four. Now I have to press check. Have a check mark. Okay. I hit the check mark. Nothing's happening. I'm going to try it again. Nope. Let's try that one more time. Um, has, has anybody got a for sale sign that they can go put out in front of Galen's house? <laughs> okay. So I, I put in a four. And I, 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 the, the screen has is just showing the, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. It is showing, right. But now, in order to get it to engage, don't you have to hit check? Yes. Okay, to make it go. I press check. Ah, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> That's not bad. What is that? Three to one? Four to one? Uh, well, that, you know. That's the first time I've been able to use it to, to actually see anything. Um, so, you know, that, that's encouraging. So the antenna is, you know, obviously the uh, something is playing havoc with my uh, environment. But it was when I was trying to test it. It was and change frequencies and stuff. It was definitely going. Everywhere, uh, you know, 
Not, but not. it doesn't. It doesn't behave. It doesn't misbehave as much though it, this evening as it was earlier during the day. Correct? Uh, I don't think it's quite as sensitive. Yeah. Okay. Now and the other. Now we buy NAGNJ moved out of your neighborhood. <laughs> uh, you mean Steve? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah, he did leave, and that I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but you know. <laughs> I, I never had an ERF on when when I was living near you, Galand. Uh huh. Okay. So, so that's do, your excuse. Do, do you do you have do you have a dummy load, uh, Galen, that you could plug in? Um, yes, I have a I have a dummy load. So what do you detach that to? What to the to the antenna analyzer? Sure. Just a second. Okay, a dry dummy load, three hundred watt. Ooh. Okay. Probably should turn it off while I'm doing this. Okay. Now what? Well, see if it exhibits the behavior. Um, nope. I'm not seeing. I mean, I'm. No, I'll try to program in a frequency. One, six. Well, one five seven five zero. Nope, worked fine. So okay. I wonder if there's some way that uh, that Galen could introduce some sort of an attenuator into the signal, and if he did, would he still be getting an accurate meeting? If we had Ed from San Juan Island, he could tell us this, I'm sure. But um, something that would yeah, or you call up the radio station and ask them to pull a plug for five minutes. How about <laughs> pressing the buttons with something other than his finger, like the eraser end of a pencil? Yeah, good idea. Something okay. Yeah. Well, and if he wants to um, rule out a problem with his transmission line tomorrow, he could uh, he could go outside and connect the dummy load via his transmission line, like where the antenna is, sub the dummy load for the antenna at the point where the antenna is. Yeah. Just in case it's the transmission line that's at fault. Well, dang, that's a, you know, yes, that, that's certainly possible. So. Well, we, when we were there last week, we uh, had mine hooked up at the rig where he is now, and outside uh, at, after the end of the 100 foot run and just at the antenna, the bottom of the ladder line. And it was doing it both places. Okay, that, that makes it sound like it's, it's just he's too close to that 50 kilowatt station. Yeah, that's sort of what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, which makes you know, trying to use an antenna analyzer to check my G5R. I don't know how that affects. I mean, the, the 7410 has a built-in tuner. So, you know, I'm assuming that if the antenna is okay and I go ahead and connect it to the radio and then use the, the automatic tuning feature of the radio, <laughs> I'm at least getting some sort of uh, right. SWR. And have, have you tried low tech and just using an SWR radio, an SWR meter? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I'm concerned that that the radio station could could fool the antenna tuner in the radio. Mm. The, well, you know, I think a broadcast band cut filter would solve all those problems. At least to stop one of the in. Is that the same as a notch filter? Same concept? Well, yeah, except this would be more like a high pass filter. It would basically knock out the medium wave broadcast band entirely and just pass HF. Gotcha. How does one go about getting something like that? Since I don't know, my radio theory isn't anywhere near the level of knowing what to do with that. Last week at the San Juan Cunt, Kelly, uh, Amateur Radio Society Zoom meeting, we had a presentation from the uh, the owner of Palomar Engineering, Palomar Engineers or whatever it's called, and they've got a solution for everything like that. So uh, he he would be able to tell you the answer and 
and sell you a product to uh, to filter it out if it's at all possible. He's really sharp. And you know, the, you are hardly the first ham with this problem. And low pass filters and high pass filters are fairly simple things. You can you could doubtless find any number of plans for building something on the web with. So as long as I know the frequency portable. that they're broadcasting on, is that what you're saying? 1550, but yeah, you just want something that kills the whole AM broadcast band, basically, and passes everything from like 80 Kevin's meters. Kevin's holding up a low-pass filter. Well, you want a high-pass filter because you want to kill the low band. I, I said it wrong. You, you want a high-pass filter because HF is higher than MF, so you want a high-pass filter to pass a, the HF frequencies and to kill the medium wave band. Yeah, I think sometimes they're called a broadcast band filter. So, hey, uh, Galen, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I'm using a industrial communication engineers uh, high pass filter model 402X. Okay. And I've been using this for years. It's rated 300 watts. It has a roll off uh, at about 1.8 megahertz is where it starts cutting. And I think it's about a 20 dB or better filter. I get 1170 here, a third harmonic at the low end of uh, 80 meters. They're about a mile away, but um, this took care of that. Okay. So um, could I get you to uh, send me a, an email with those specs? Sure, I'll uh, I appreciate I'll... it because it would, you know, right now I don't have anything to write with, and <laughs> okay, no problem. Here. I will. Uh, yeah, I just I thought maybe it was on the floor behind my rigs, but it's actually up here on the desk, so I found it. I'll write it down for you. Okay, thanks. Let's put it in the uh, chat room, Brian. Oh, okay, yeah, will do. I use this so rarely. I've got to figure out how to do that. <laughs> Did my, maybe it didn't come up. Yep. Did you see it, you see it. Yeah, I just Googled it. This is what I found here. Nice. Is that what you <clears> have, <throat> uh, Brian? Uh, it looks very similar. You know, I'm guessing as old as mine is, they probably have updated the manufacturing or something. I mean, it's just a simple device. It's a, it's a metal box with SO239s on each end. Mm-hmm. I think I need to order one, too. Are you getting interference as well, bud? Yeah, I've got a radio station two miles from me, but my my um, antenna analyzer doesn't dance around like it does at Galen's house. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have issues with my analyzer, but they... They actually forget to, uh, <laughs> I looked them up on the FCC, and they have to cut their power to 5,000 watts at night and alter their pattern, and they were forgetting to do that, so I contacted their engineer and asked them to please start doing that, because I only have the issues at night, uh, and that was, they were a little lax in their uh, following their guidelines. So if you go dig around the FCC, you can actually find the radio station's uh, antenna patterns and what their requirements are for how much power they can run. Did, did they give you any grief, Brian, about it, or did they take no, care of it? No, they, actually, they did not acknowledge me at all, but within 24 hours of me sending the email, it was fixed. <laughs> <laughs> and it had it been going be on for big... a couple of months. <laughs> That's a pretty serious violation to be transmitting <laughs> yeah. with too when, much power when, at night. Right. When yeah. we first moved in here, when we first moved in here, um, this station was interfering with, uh, I mean, it was inter interfering with almost everything I had and, uh, you know, was making sounds on all my computer speakers. And I did contact the radio station and they ended up sending their engineer built a filter to put on one of my this is way before i had my ham license and anything to put on some speakers so that i could listen to music in the house on uh because i had some really good quality uh stereo uh, studio grade speakers and so 
So he supposedly gave me that, but that's the only time I've had it filtered out. But I did. You, you are you are not the only one that did that. I when I was moved to Ferndale, I looked up the articles on them, and there there were there were numerous complaints. So, yeah, well, they, they are all. I mean, they it's constant. I mean, I can I literally hear a din on all any speaker I've got connected to a wire. Um, there's just that slow level hiss and you can hear them when they're broadcasting. You know, and it's, I've told this story before. It's not just speakers. Um, my 3d printer, um, if I was to reach around and put my hand back near the controller board, the stepper motors on the printer would start playing music. <laughs> you know, just vibrating with the radio signal, detecting it. They weren't moving; they just were buzzing. It's an undocumented feature, right there. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, so it sounds like if I get one of these filters, uh, I should be able to. And you're just recommending that one particular one, uh, Brian, because you. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying this is an outstanding one. It's the only one I've ever used, uh, but it did solve my issues. I don't think I was getting as strong a problem as you're getting. I, I don't hear them on my wiring or, or anything. Um, I had a friend who was a radio station engineer in South Dakota, and they had somebody that lived right next to their tower array, and it was actually coming, uh, getting rectified on the plumbing of their house <laughs> and literally vibrating the uh like the toilet and stuff so there's only a certain amount you can do if they're operating within their guidelines and you're just catching a lot of rf um i mean that's kind of my situation other than when they they were running too much power but it's still an issue without the filter even when they're running fine i hear them whatever three times 1170 is uh it's it's pretty loud here without the filter okay well that's good to know uh, that there is something i can do about it i wasn't sure so i appreciate everybody's input um i'll see what i can find and let you know um how that goes